Good morning. Good morning, Tony. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, Lloyd. Very well indeed. Um, Good. Right, first of all, a little bit of feedback. Um, everybody seems very pleased with what you've got to say, uh, less so with what I've got to say, so I'm going to keep <laughs> my mouth shut. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. But no, the comments have been pretty positive, I must say, so really good. Good. And although we've focused initially on reviewing the games, it's becoming more and more evident that people are, want to ask you questions, which is great, because effectively that's what it's all about, interaction. It's not you and me just chewing the fat. It's that anyone wants to get involved can get involved. Um, we have looked at the option of... Um, taking questions live on air but that has one or two problems and ramifications if we get somebody on who's perhaps had a drink or suddenly <laughs> wants to say something inappropriate so at the moment that's on the back boiler but that may happen who knows anyway when we finished off number three and we are now into four who'd have thought eh? we were only going to do it as one as a trial and there you go yeah it's going down well yes yeah, it's good i yeah. enjoy it yeah well Following on from a good home uh, draw at Haywood Heath, um, we drew at the Belmont with Cray Valley PM one all, which was an, yet another draw. I know we focused on the amount of yep. draws, and you very, very obviously highlighted if we could turn those into wins, we'd be in a completely different position. Yeah. But we're still a hard side to beat, aren't we? Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, Cray Valley were they were they come off the back of a really successful season the previous what, year, year year before. Um, obviously won the scaffold and got into the FA Vars Trophy final um, and, and had a great day out at Wembley. So um, there was a lot of talk about though, the, them as a side and how uh, how competitive they would have been in our level. Um, and you only had to look at their players to understand that they were they were someone you really couldn't take lightly. And to be perfectly honest, um, yeah, they they were a really really impressive side. And we and uh, that one, that game, I think it was an evening fixture, and we yep. and we and and we identified a few players of theirs that we thought could were really really impressive, um, and probably should be playing leagues above. To be perfectly honest, and 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 Kevin Watson, who's the manager there, has got a um, has managed to get to get together a really good side. Um, and we and I remember asking Connor Sanders that day to do a number on their number ten, Anthony Edgar, um, and we did a man marking scheme, and, and just basically Con, Connor followed him round like like you know. Just literally, he would have walked to the toilet, and Connor would have followed him. So, um, yeah, we, we we did a we did a, a, a man marking, and it worked really well. Everything we felt ran through their number ten, Edgar, and, and they and they failed to sort of have a lot more cohesion when when uh, when when their number ten wasn't available. And 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 yeah, they I think they went one nil up. It was kind of against the run of play, but we were always in that game really closely. And then and and as later as the game went on, the more the more we sort of. Um, uh, uh, you know, threaten the equaliser. Unfortunately, um, in the last, uh, in literally the last couple of minutes, I think we got our just rewards, to be honest. Um, and Marcus Elliott got the equaliser. Um, and I felt that, um, you know, a point was probably the, li the very least that we deserve from that fixture, and albeit against a really, really impressive side. Yeah, and uh, following on from that, we were away at Burgess Hill. Um, we actually ended up losing there 3-2, mm -hmm. but Burgess Hill is a funny place for us to go to, Whitsall Town. Um, but it was a decent game, although at times we just seemed to be, I don't know if the word's too relaxed or... Yeah, we, they, they, they were really, they, to be honest, the old-fashioned term is they just shelled it. And, and, and they were a side that were really down the bottom of the league and they were struggling themselves. Um, and, and all they did was they just wanted to turn, turn, you know, turn play over as much, just a very, very direct side. Any opportunity they could have second balls, just hook over the top and hook over the top. Um, and and yeah, we we did we had a poor day that game, and I mean especially we actually hit the post twice in the first in the first fifteen minutes. And to be fair, we we really started quite impressively. I remember I think we watched a video of it, um, and then um, and just as the game went on, we yeah we we did we lacked some, we lacked cohesion in our game that day. Um, and to be honest. Although we probably possibly could have salvaged something, I remember Gilly getting an or getting a late opportunity um, and made it three two, um, and we may have nicked something. But really, we were up against a side that was scrapping for their lives, and um, and we we really didn't sort of we really didn't perform as well as we would have liked. 
Um, and we did that the game afterwards. We did a real good debrief session. We sort of got the video system up and made sure we went through and highlighted some things as players and individuals that we felt, look, you know, come on, boys, we really got to improve on those certain individual mistakes and certain errors, certain positional plays that we could have worked on. And to be honest, I think from then, from that game, we then kind of went on a little bit of a, a little bit of a run, which was nice. So um, it was pleasing that we were able to identify things as, a, as collectively and, and, and work on things individually and collectively. And, um, and we reaped the, and said we got some benefits from it. Well, we certainly did because in the next uh, next one we were away at Chalfant St Peter's, but that was in the uh, the FA Trophy. We won one nil, so obviously you've done your homework, briefed the lads a bit better, and we ended up with a result. Well, do you know what the, the, the really funny thing is, Tony, on this one actually, because it kind of throws homework out the window. Um, we had prepared as best we could against a side that we didn't know an awful lot about. Um, we had a we had a um, uh, I'll, I'll run through a little story in a moment, but we we arrived at the ground. Um, and the pitch was horrendous. It was horrendous. Um, we'd worked on all week on patterns of play and phases of play and how we can exploit them. We knew with John Yafur and, and Marshall Ratton that we had, and they were explosive in their work on, on either side of the wing. And, and then we turned up at the ground, and the pitch was just it, on it, it was square. It was like a square pitch. Um, it was divots and bumps and lumps everywhere. It was dry, so it was really. But and, and in the end, we we turned around and we got together in the change room before the game, and we said, "Listen." This is not really a, an ideal pitch for us to be able to play. Now we've got to go and be direct and we've got to go and make sure that we put the ball into areas and, and um, get our wide players to be able to go, you know, put the ball into areas for our wide players to be able to chase after, really, with Marcus Elliott up there as well, who, whose endeavour and work rate that day was fantastic. Um, and we just had a game plan that just sort of, that sort of said, look, we've got to turn it on its head. We all bought into it. And to be perfectly honest, they were a side that were flying at the time as well. Um, and we and, and we did it. We, it was it was a good away performance for us in, in in really really tough conditions. But the interesting bit that day, which was we, I remember us getting the coach journey up there, um, and Brian, our kit man, bless him, he'd forgot. The, can you remember? He forgot, yeah, he, I we, turned up, we turned up at the turned up at the ground, and we had no socks. And it was like, oh no, the, what you know, what? The, so bless him. I think there was there was a couple of supporters. Steve, the chairman, went racing around to the local. Um, local sports direct and we ended up managing to get sort of like 15 sets of pl- pl- uh, of sort of kids blue socks that hardly fit the players but it was one of those ones where we got back on the coach afterwards we could all have a laugh about it but um some of those things like i said you, they unite you together they put you to, they pull you together and we all had a good jolly sing song and a beer on the way home so it was it was it was a good day in the end it was a good day and you're quite right about the state of the pitch because uh if I could call it the away end, which was to the left-hand side as you looked at the pitch, and yeah. down in that far right-hand corner, it was almost like just little hills. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I've never seen yeah. a pitch like it. No, it was. It was a really, really poor pitch. And as I said, it credits the players that day because we um, we wanted to play a certain way. We wanted to try and you know try and move the ball and manipulate the ball in ways that we'd worked on. But I think that we were just probably uh, we we understood the situation. Um, and and together we sort of came together and said, right, okay, this is going to be our game plan from now, and we were able to execute that, which was um, obviously from my from my um, impression of it was 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 really really pleasing that the boys were able to sort of uh, take that on board. Right, okay, this is going to be a strange one. I'm going to throw this one at you. Uh, we'll on. probably end up calling this sock gate because you mentioned <laughs> socks then. But I've got a question for you. What is it? What's the obsession with players today? And I know it happens with our side of cutting the end of the socks off. What's that all about? Um, it's uh, I was I did it later on in my career. Um, every time I used to train, I used to wear white socks, so white white sports socks, um, and I found them a lot more comfortable than having the thicker football sock under in in my boot. Um, and I just think it's just slowly, just gradually sort of gone into non-league and uh, effectively. And players just feel a lot more comfortable with their own socks, you know, within their boot now, as opposed to sort of the thicker sock of a football sock, which sometimes is a little is a little less comfortable. So that was my reason for it. I've never actually asked the players. Me personally, it's a case of if if a player feels more comfortable doing a certain thing. And, and and we allow it as a club. And I remember speaking to Steve about it, and we were able to trim and cut the socks for the for the boys. Then it was a case of um, 
uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever makes those players more comfortable and more happy. It's one less thing for them to have to think about and worry about. But um, the boots nowadays are so thin and they're, you know, they really are. They're almost, you know, they're, they're lighter than a pair of socks, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I think that uh, it's more of a case of comfort rather than, um, rather than some sort of fashion statement. Uh, a thought just occurred to me. Imagine turning the clock back and getting one of the old boys from, well, my, well, I wouldn't say my era, but probably before, mm. that were playing football in the 40s and 50s, and they walked into a changing room and saw all these socks with the yeah. feet cut out. What on earth mm. going on? Yeah, how times have changed. It, it, it is. It, it, it is. It's just, like I said, it's more of a comfort thing for the players. And uh, um if if they're in the right state frame of mind and it helps them in, in in any you know what helps them by one percent to be able to be in a in a better state of mind then then I'm all for it. Good for you. Right here we go. Question time. Uh, this one's it. from Ben. Um, he said he's got two questions for Blackie. First one: How difficult was it to get a squad together for the Guernsey away part, knowing that a couple of key players were not available due to work and had pre-booked holidays? And how impressed were you? with the way the team played and how did the celebrations go after the game? <laughs> uh, the Guernsey away, the Guernsey one was really, really tough. Um, I think we all know the issues that we had in the first game. And we'll, if, we have, if we don't, we'll probably discuss it another time. But obviously the game got rearranged um, yeah. to a midweek, um, which was really, really tough um, in a short space of time. I think we had like three weeks or something, three, four weeks to be able to re... Um, and, and then also, basically, now you're not just playing a normal... And it was on a Wednesday as well, which is unusual yep. for us. Usually it's on a Tuesday. So, really, players schedule their diaries around, you know, from what, around football uh, um, in well in advance, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're in public sector, whatever it will be. So, then asking players to become available, not just for one night, but for two, because we had to stay over the night before... We had to stay over that night, and then you're going to miss the day work afterwards... Um, was really, really, really challenging, really, really tough. We literally went with with 13 players um, and no start, just my, myself and um, myself and Laney. Um, so we were really down to the bare, bare bones. Um, and yeah, it, 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 I had no issues with it. As I said, you know, some play, they, I know every single player did everything they could to try and make themselves available for it. And, and great for those, amazing for those players that did, sad for those players that couldn't because I know how hard they tried. But that evening was, that was a really special evening, a really, really special evening. You know, we, we lost Liam Dixon after about 13 minutes into the game. Um, we were already playing with a sort of, you know, a, as I said before, a, a, a bare 11. Um, so we put Charles back into midfield. We then asked Leo Mazzone, who was sort of, you know, wasn't 100% fit at the time, to then go and play right back um, because then Gertie dropped back into centre-half. So really, we ended up going with a complete makeshift back four, um, a midfield three of TJ, Gilly and Charles, which was just full of energy. Um, and, and to be perfectly honest, Dan Eason kept us in that game. And I want to touch upon Dan a bit in, 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 in a moment. But Dan kept us in that game for the first 45 minutes. And when we got back in at half time, I remember saying to the boys, listen, they will, they, their fatigue levels, they, they said their fitness levels will suffer. So the longer we can keep ourselves in this game, um, keep the intensity of, the, of our play really, really high because they will suffer. And... After in 20 minutes into the second half, two of their players went down with cramp, and 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 there was a lull in the play. If obviously they're, they're getting treated, and I called the boys over by the dugout. And if you ever get the opportunity to watch the video, you'll probably see it. And and I remember looking at the players' eyes. I said, "I told you, boys, this is exactly this is our opportunity." And our boys smelt blood, and they really did. And they just and the young boys that they were, and the Gilly, TJ, um, Maca, Charles. Uh, John Marshall, they, their eyes lit up as if they we're going to win this game. And to be honest, from later, and as I said, that we did, we just went on and we played some of the most fantastic football for the last 20 minutes, half an hour. That even Guernsey just could not, could not live with. We were a really good football inside, um, and we walked away with that game. It was, it was jubilant, it was joy, and well, probably one of my most in my short time as manager. For all the circumstances and the situations that were, we say that that uh, that were presented to us, which I felt were really, really unfair, that we had to travel and do that game on a Wednesday night for whatever reasons. Um, 
but to, to then get that was probably probably one of the most uh, probably the best mate days I've had in management so far. Um, and then the scenes in the bar where well, we said we had a night over in the in the hotel afterwards. No dramas, no problems. But let's just say we had a nice good drink and a nice good celebration. So it was a, a, a really really good couple of days. Long and tough and tiring, but yeah, it was all worthwhile once we got the result. Well, what a brilliant summary that was. Actually, um, I didn't want to stop you at all, but uh, we are going to summarise that game later on. But what I just uh, thought we're going to try and do as well is um, you highlighted the fact that the game was recorded. Um, I'll get Hayden to uh, insert a couple of clips within yeah. this when we do it so that that, mm. that will highlight exactly what you said. Yeah, you know, the, half time, the, the lull when uh, they they the couple of their players cramped and then all of a sudden we've got all the energy so yeah. fair play to lucky that was really yeah. good well done all right on to the next one right um this one as well this next one as well is going to put us in a situation where i want to talk about it more later but this okay. is a question uh, what was your favorite game to watch as a manager during the season now you've already highlighted the guernsey but uh, jacob cousins has said Great, great season. Best game by far was the Welling United. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I, I think he's right. I think um, from, a, from a, again, from an, an occasion point of view, I think the Guernseys and the Wellings are hard to beat, um, especially the Welling, you know, that we know they're a side that, um, that were, you know, obviously two leagues above us. They weren't doing so well in their league. They changed their manager. Um, but you would expect to sit, you know, a conference south top side to be able to pretty much wipe the floor with with us. Pretty, you know, you'd expect that if that makes sense. Um, I know they made a couple of changes, but then I remember speaking the boys speaking before the game. They said that uh, um, that they're they're actually playing a really really strong side. So it's like okay, well, you know, it's a free hit for us. Um, um, yeah, that day itself was was really, really good. Again, it showed our level of fitness. It showed our level of enthusiasm because as the game went on, um, we were the side that just got stronger. Um, I agree with I agree with, with um, Jason, did you say? Did Jason ask a question? Jacob. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, uh, Jacob, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree with Jacob. I think that was certainly one of the days of the season, one of the games of the season. The other one, the... I, I like the tactical battles and I, and I like the games where, we, again, we're a bit of an underdog. Um, and it sounds really, really strange, but I remember the Chichester game away at half time. We came in and they were a really, really impressive side. Um, and it's the moments when, like I said, you know, whether it's the Chalfont game where you ask the players to do certain things and everyone buys into it. And it's exactly the same in the Chichester game. And it wasn't great from us. We didn't play particularly well, but it just goes to show that we were able to get a one all draw. Mark, I think Marcus and Connor Sanders missed uh, like one on ones in the last minute against the side that. So those games actually, I sort of walk away from. Although again, it was another draw, which is frustrating. But considering at half time we were a side that were down and out, and and against a really really impressive side that really should have probably gone on and won that game quite convincingly, quite easily, to then walk away knowing, oh my God, we we should have won that game. Those ones for me, uh, at half time when you're able to get the boys in, you look them in the eyes, and they, you get a reaction from them. Those from 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 a managerial point of view, or manager's point of view, I think they're ones that uh, that certainly stick in my mind. Yeah, you're right. It's it's all about the manager's perception and what he sees, and and you really you really shoot from the hip. Uh, going back to Ben as well, because Ben's got two questions, and the second one of his questions was, and it also ties in with a question from Gary Carter. Now Gary Carter's under 11 manager, he often yes. supplies the, you know, Gary, he supplies Gary. the. Yes, very regular, yeah. But Gary's actually taken on the 11s into under 12s next year. So he's, yep. he's getting really passionate and involved now with the club. Yes. Which he always has been. So Ben would say, um, I know you're a big fan of first teams bringing youth players through. How do you see it going in Whistle Town? And are you happy with the pathway that you guys are looking to implement? And then following on from that, Gary's brought up about uh, when the under-12s play their game, which is on a Sunday afternoon. They train on a Wednesday evening. And in a private conversation with me, and he's touched on this here, is there any chance of you, um, if you like, having a little private chat with the team and yeah. maybe bringing in a couple of players as well, just it's to give them that little boost that they want? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, the, the first point regarding the pathway, um, that was something that we set up um, 
we had meetings, myself, Steve, Ron, Josh, um, who's obviously uh, head of the academy as well as in, we've then decided to implement a reserve, you know, get together a reserve team that we felt was a nice bridge and pathway between, as we say, the academies and the under-18s into the, into the, into the, uh, into the first team. Um, you know, Josh has done a great job because, you know, I have to look at the side that he's put together, that he's... Uh, uh, they they got into into, into the Kent, Kent Intermediate Cup final as yep. well, which okay, which was disappointing that, that we haven't been able to. Hopefully, we may be able to still play that next year. Um, but yeah, it, it, listen, when when you talk about pathways and youth and and, and the benefit, you you can't expect this to happen overnight. That's really it's, I must emphasise that the the academy that we've got we, we we've got together. We've got two or three or, play, or two or three players there that we have a high hopes for. Um, we know Mohammed Cham. We we know we know about that. We still feel that he, he said he's still got levels of progression to get through. Um, what what we can't do is is sort of say that uh, we expect this to happen. You know, instantly. It's not. It's a longer term process. But we certainly want to make sure that the that everything or the building blocks and the foundation are there, so that that that, that you know under under 11, Gary's under 11s into under 12s, they're going to be reaping the benefits in four or five years' time, um, and 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 hopefully in in the next year or two, we should then be able to see some progression of of, of the under 18s uh, academy players as well as those acad you know academy players moving into the reserve system um, to give them a more um, uh, you know an opportunity at playing a more senior level of football so yes happy with it um no question about that but as i said i think it's we've got to be aware that it's a longer term plan rather than rather than a short term fix it's going to be the it's 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 this, these 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 things have to be set up correctly if they're not set up correctly then then um or should we say the reasons that they're set up correctly are to benefit the club in the much longer term plan. That's ha that, that has to be that has to be correct. And with Steve's Steve's involvement in in the Whitstable Town Junior section, that's that's the angle that we're coming from. If we, if we just go in and, and keep thinking about you know the living for the day and, and living for the moment and who, what player can we get from this that and other, then then we're in a position where really it's it's just not sustainable. Um, and we want to make sure that there's pathways for young hungry plus being good enough players for Whitstable Town um, that as I said we give them the opportunity to play for their local club. Well that's um, a, <clears throat> a terrific answer yet again but almost this is almost going to knock it back because uh, this is from David Godfrey and he's asked a couple of questions. I have to be very careful how I phrase these because um, it touches on player selection and that involves yeah. naming players and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But as long as you're happy for me to do that, I'll give it a fly. And you, you know these two players anyway. Uh, David's question is, first, I understand that player recruitment, player recruitment related, and I understand Lloyd would rather not commit himself, which is pretty understandable. But he's yeah. mentioned two players that he feels are available and may well benefit the club. One is Ollie Gray, who you know all about, we know all about. Another one is Tom Chapman. And he's asked, are they on your radar, Lloyd? Uh, listen, uh, they're, they're, they're boys that I know very, very well. They're great lads. It's not fair for me to be able to talk about other players. Um, I, I think that we all know the qualities of those lads. That, you know, Ollie Gray was obviously a, a Whitstable player before. Um, and they're boys that I know very, very well. Uh, sadly, I, it's not right for me to be able to talk about other players. Uh, um, I think we should stop you there, Lauren. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. But as I said, they're, they're great lads. They're good players. And um, so... Excuse me. All we're looking to try and do is to try and get the best local players that we can in, in an environment that they're that they're happy with. So, um, but um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm to answer. All right. Well, Dave has actually said here. Look, daft question to finish with. Craig Avery. This is obviously yeah. somebody that you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I know Avery. Well, yeah. He said has told me of your cr cricketing prowess, and he asked the <laughs> question: Have you ever played? at Whitstable's ground next door to the Belmont and if you have have you played with any success no no I, I do you know what um <laughs> we I used to play at school I love playing cricket at school um I loved all sports at school to be honest so it was 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 yeah it was was a keen sportsman um, but no that was just a summer with summer when um I was roped in by a family member just to go and play a game of cricket and to be honest I played two or three um it was then um yeah, to be honest, it would. It I enjoyed it. I was asked to go and play, but in answer to your question, no, I've never played 
Um, I, well, I don't believe I have. I don't believe I don't believe I have. I probably hit a few footballs over there, but that's probably yeah, as far as I've, yeah. that's probably as close as I've got to playing on the wicket. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's go back to the games and then I'll finish up with a couple of questions as well. Um, when did we finish off? We was at uh, Chalfont St. Peter's, um, followed on yes. by the 2-1 uh, win, win away at the Cray Valley in the Kent Senior Cup. Yeah, that's right. That was, um, yeah. that was Harry Dannard's first game. I, uh, again, remembering, recalling, I think we had some travel issues that day. Um, so we didn't want to rush Harry Stannard back. I think Taylor Fisher, Taylor Fisher was coming back after after an illness as well, um, and, and and really we just had to sort of put a side together again, just through travel issues on a Tuesday night, coming round the South Circular. Um, players saying, "Sorry, Blackie, I'm going to be 45 minutes late." You, we've all been there. We all know out yeah. there. Uh, okay. So it's so, um, yeah. Harry came in and did really, really well. He scored that day. Um, did he score two? Or did he score? Did he score one? I think he scored one. And then one. I think he scored yeah. one. Uh, um, but yeah, that was, that was again. It was a pleasing. A, a pleasing. Um, it was. It was the cup game, wasn't it? It was the Velocity it's Cup. I think. Cup, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kent Senior Cup. That's right. That's right. Yeah. sorry. You're right. Yeah. Kent Senior Cup. So. Um, yeah, again, it was an opportunity for us to look at a couple of players, although our hand was forced and how why we had to do that. Um, I remember Taylor Fisher worked, worked really hard for 18 minutes, got good 18 minutes under his belt. I think Harry Stannard did or did fair, something fairly similar, um, an hour's worth of work. Um, and again, from, from our point of view, it was pleasing that, that, that we got a result against a really good side. And to be honest, it was um, the start of the Kent Senior Cup run that we had. Um, and that was a tough place to go. So, uh, yeah, pleasing result. Yes, it was a good one. Um, and then we uh, followed that up. We went 2-0. Uh, be, be, excuse me, sorry, stumbling a bit there. Following on from the Cray Valley, we beat three bridges 2-0 at home. Uh, that was yeah. a, a decent result. Yeah, yeah. That, we were just beginning to get a little bit of momentum, weren't we? And I, and I touched upon it uh, one of the, the last episodes we did. We talked about um, how we were able to find some sort of... Uh, uh, consistency with with the wingers that we had brought in, brought in. Um, we were able to sort of implement a style and a pattern that we felt was was a lot more uh, was a lot better for us, to be perfectly honest. Um, and we were then just beginning to uh, to find our feet and get and, and get some momentum. Um, yeah, two 0 uh, To be honest, I think we start. I think it was two 0 at half. Was it two 0 at half time? Yeah, it uh, was. Yeah. Yeah, two new at half time. Um, probably could have gone on and kicked on that game a little bit more. Um, I think it was a professional job we did in the end and saw it out. And I, I know the guys over there at, at Three Bridges, and um, I think there was a couple of sending offs that they had as well. So really, it was a case of us seeing that, seeing out and making sure that we got the result rather than than than, yeah. um, than, than than becoming too expansive and going for three or four when when we could have left ourselves vulnerable and open. So a thoroughly professional job we did. Well, you've got a good memory on these things because um, yeah. the goal came from Leon Zoni He scored in the 21st minute, yeah, and then Aaron ahead of one in the 24th minute. So, you know, all of a sudden we're two 0 up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and like you say, we, we we saw the game out professionally, and I think that was that was key for us. You know, three points were the most important thing. We wanted to make sure that we'd given ourselves a good foundation and platform to go and build on, which we were just we were just beginning to do, to be honest. So. Um, yeah, it was it was um, again a, a valuable three points. That was followed up uh, by Ware at home, where we lost one nil, very very late goal. That was in the FA Trophy. That was a frustrating day. Uh, no, we drew that one. Where we drew? Wow! Yeah, because we went to oh, yeah, didn't we? Then we got, yeah, you're right. Then we went yeah. to them. Didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we right. lost right. there. Was it two or fair. one? All? What was, two, was it two or one? I'm, I'm sure it was. Was it one all? I can't remember. I remember. I, I remember the away game more than yeah. than, than the home game. So do I. Yeah, so do I. Uh, that's why I was focusing on the one nil because we, yeah. we lost a late goal, didn't we? Yeah. That's right. That was that was in, in, in last minute of extra time. I think it was, wasn't it, or some, yes, it or going into extra time, something like that. Um, but that was probably one the away game. I, I'll, I'll touch over, brush over the over the home game. I can't really recall that one too much, no. but I do remember the away game at where you then asked to go and travel to North London on a Tuesday night. Again, the, the yeah. problems yeah. of getting the players together because of work issues. Um, you know, people were literally. I remember Gertie. Bless him. You know, he, he drove up from work and then was literally going back after a game to a night shift. And you sort of think to yourself, you know, some of these players, what they're having to go they and really do. They really put it in, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really do. And, you know, it's the same as every, you know, I think it's, 
Tom Bright, Tom Bryant was exactly the same. I think he'd raced over from work round somewhere, and it would just, you know. They're, sometimes they, they throw these things at you, but you just have to deal with it and roll with the punches. And that again, I remember that day. They were a side that had they'd been they'd been record they'd they'd been well known for spending quite a bit of money in their league in Richmond League, and they were one of the one of the favourites for for the uh, for for the um, uh, for their for their division. Um, and to be honest, that that home that away game, we really did perform well. Our ball retention was really really good. Their surface of four G or three G four G was really good. Right. It would allow we allowed us to be able to play some good football and to be honest, although there wasn't many chances either end, um, it was it was sad that I think someone picked up an injury. I think Maka picked up an injury towards the end, um, and then we had we had to shuffle things around in the la- literally the last minute or so, and the goal sadly came from down Maka's side, which we managed, you know, because we had to change things around. So all these things just sometimes just don't fall in. But but really, I, I couldn't have been more proud of the boys that day, and 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 I think it just goes to show how far we were improving and progressing as a side. Yeah, really, really good. And one of those games where, although it wasn't a goal fest, it was a it was a, an enthralling yeah. game to watch. Yeah, and really. Good yeah. football by both sides. It agreed. was good. Agreed. It totally was... agree. From, from if you were a neutral in that in, in that ground, although like I said, you only got one goal and one goal from it, I think you you would have walked away happy that the quality of the the level of quality that was on display that day. Absolutely, and it goes, just goes to hi- highlight. The, the score doesn't always show mm. through the quality of the game, does it? it was, yeah, it was and again, cool. probably on the back end of that result, I think that was that was harsh for us. I don't think we deserved. I don't think we yeah. deserved anything. To be perfectly honest, I don't think we're. You know, it would have been, It was harsh on either side that lost. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay, we'll just finish off with a question for um, from Jeffrey. He's uh, bless him. He's sent in about five, and I'm going to highlight one. I'll hold a couple back for. Um, but this one yeah. is actually to do with uh, this is actually to do with uh, changes that you'd like to see. We, we touched on it last week. Changes that you'd like to see implemented in the game. For instance, now right. they've, you know, uh, all right, they've got video referees in. It's never going to happen at our level. But they, he's mentioned a couple of things, and he, this is this I find quite interesting. Regarding playing the game, he says, I think attacking football would be enhanced if goalkeepers were only allowed to play the ball inside the penalty area. Also, if the goal, the ball goes behind for a corner at a point between the goal and the edge of the penalty, then I think a short corner would ensure. Sure, The corner being taken on the edge of the penalty area. Again, I would suggest that where a player is fouled en route to the penalty area and goal, the offending team may not form a defensive wall. So Jeffrey's all about goals, 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 yeah. isn't he? Is he playing hockey by any chance? While it's in your while it's in my mind actually, the last point was he was talking about the defensive wall. I know there's I know there's there's regulations now that are you, you limit the amount of people within a wall depending on how close it is to the penalty area. So already that one's being that's being implemented. Um, it's it, it's a strange rule. If if an attacking side has got a free kick, which obviously you know the attacking side is going to shoot from a free kick, if they bring one of their players into the wall, or they're not allowed to bring one of their players into, I'm still not 100% sure of the rule. To no. be perfectly, I'm, I don't. And actually, uh, referees have sort of you know told certain players on on within the game. I know they're telling them what they can and can't do. So it's it's a bit of a strange one. But there is some sort of rule and there is some rule of stipulation regarding the defensive wall. Um, which, which is, um, I'm not sure about the short corner one. Um, but like I said, it not really, not really, not really a keen fan of that one. It, as I said, just you'll probably go and watch some hockey if that's if, if you want to see a short <laughs> corner. Kind of thing. Uh, um, but in the touching on, you know, goalkeepers staying in their areas for attacking plays. Um, I actually think personally that that would restrict the amount of attacking play. Um, and what I mean by that is that if you actually watch. You know, building phases of play and building, um, or, or should we say, attacks starting. If you actually review the amount of attacks started from a goalkeeper being outside his area, I think that's only promoting attacking football. I think you'll probably end up restricting it. If you watch the, some of the goalkeepers now, whether you're watching Premier League or you're watching our level, the amount of ball retention that involves a goalkeeper standing outside of his area to be able to be an extra player on the out on the, on, as an outfield player, um, because nowadays they're so... 
composed and, and just as good technically as some of the outfield players, um, then you actually you actually starting attacks from from defense you know from from a low from 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 def uh, defensively your 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 starting attack. So restricting them to being inside the area, I think that will probably end up actually having a negative effect on attacking play if that makes sense. So. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure on that one. I'm, I think that will probably, like I said, probably, um, uh, probably, probably cause more defensive play than than anything else. Right. Just to finish up with a personal question for myself. Um, really revolves around something you highlighted earlier on. You you mentioned Dan Eason and well, yeah. what a player he's been for the club. Really fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he does install an element of confidence and calm around the team because. From my point of view, uh, obviously, just as a spectator watching on, um, our boys don't panic when uh, when he's in goal. There seems to be that calmness about him. He doesn't yeah. charge it out, and he just does what he does. He's he's he's. Um, I've worked with Dan previously when I was at Hythe. Um, uh, when I was Hythe as a coach, so I'd know Dan for you know for a good few years. Um, He's, I, I said before, and I've said it in interviews before. I believe he's the best, go one of the best goalkeepers in this league, if not the best goalkeeper in this league. Um, early on in that season, when when I took over, the two main people that I have to mention was Dan Eason and Tom Bryant. They were the two people, the two two lads that were obviously uh, in the previous uh, in the previous squad with Scott, um, and they were two players that, that, that said to me right from the beginning that they didn't want to move. They were happy. They wanted to stay here and they wanted to work with myself and then and 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 see the change that was going to happen. Um, they've been absolutely first class. Dan Eason's performances as a goalkeeper early in the first phase of the first quarter of the season were just just unreal. Um, what he did within the changing room, he's just he's just so level headed. He's he's very very he's calm, but he's straight to the point, and that's the best. That's Dan Eason's best attribute is that you know you, he doesn't suffer fools gladly. He knows the people he can trust. He knows the people that he can you know he, he tells it as it is. He, there's you don't he doesn't he doesn't shirk any responsibility. Um, he, you know if if he's accountable, he holds his hand up. If he feels someone else is accountable, he'll tell him. And is that element of respect that he has, and the same as Tom Bryant as well. That there's element of respect that those two players have. Um, that, as I said, the sort of um, that have overseen this period of transition, and those two players, as I said, have been really, really key for how I've been able to uh, uh, to come in and, and and to build a squad. Um, um, but yeah, two, two two very very important players, and, and and two two very very good players as well. Well, I'm so pleased that you mentioned Tom Bryant because it would be remiss of me if I uh, I didn't echo your sentiments and your comments because. He has been a stalwart for the club as well. So, yeah, yeah he's a wholehearted 110% player. Um, yeah. And you've got to have that in your side, haven't you? Yeah, he, oh, I've got a great relationship with Tom. Um, obviously, I made him captain when when, when, um, when, when I came here. Uh, you know, we speak regularly. We, we speak regularly, whether it's football or just family stuff. We just we, we keep in contact. But, yeah, he's got a real desire and a will to win that's 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 really, really infectious and, and uh, really, really infectious. Um yeah, a good professional, works hard. Um, again, has the respect to the players, which I think is key. Um, and, and as I said, you know, I think those two in particular. And, and I'm only a reason. I, there's lots of others to mention, obviously. But as I said, yeah, I sure. think they probably, I think they probably deserve a special mention. Uh, m more to the fact that, as I said, there were sort of two senior players in the previous um, under the under Scott's under Scott's control. Um, and, and as players, sort of as 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 the as things changed last summer, um, there were two players that were really, really key, uh, really, really key to making sure that they wanted to stay part of the of the new project. And um, yeah, I was extremely happy that they that they did, and continue to be. Well, that's uh, that's wrapping up for this week, mate. I'm very, uh, very pleased with uh, all what you've gone through. Um, my last little question to anybody watching this, and the response has been truly um, superb. If you've got any questions for Lloyd, you can tell what an honest and straightforward guy he is. Um, I think perhaps we'd better keep away from player selection and uh, questions <laughs> like that, as much as everybody <laughs> likes to hear. But, uh, yeah, it's not really the sort of thing for open-air publication. But the rest of it, absolutely bring it on. Ask any questions you like, and uh, Lloyd will do his best, as he always does, to give you a straightforward answer. So it only remains for me to say thank you very much, uh, Lloyd. You've been a, a star as always, and we'll look forward to the next one, mate. Take care. Cheers, Toad. Stay safe, mate.
Thank you, and you, and everybody else out there. Don't forget, it's going to be months before this is over, not weeks. So take a deep breath, shut the front door, and don't let anybody in. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> take care. Cheers. See you.